This Devar Torah is dedicated for the memory of my mother, the Ilu Nishmat Rachel Bat Yosef Chaim Ruach Adonai Tanichena Began Eden. We finished off Parshat Bereshit, where Hashem describes how disappointed He is with the ten generations of mankind since the inception of the world. He's upset that there is a lot of immorality and uh, crimes committed in the world, and he decides that he is going to destroy the world and start afresh with a man by the name of Noah. The last pasuk in Bereshit is, Ve'noach matzachen be'enei Adonai. And Noah managed to find favor in the eyes of Hashem. So what does that mean? It means that out of the whole generation of bad people, Hashem singled out Noah for some reason and said, I like this guy. We start the next parasha, Parshat Noah, with the following sentence, Pasuk. Ele told Noah, Noah ish sadik, tamim haya bedorotav, et ha-elohim hitalech Noah. So, this Pasuk brings out many questions. First question is, grammatically, why does it say, Ele toldo Noah, and then it starts talking about the, the um, good deeds of Noah. It's saying that he was a great, righteous individual, and he walked with God. And then in the next Pasuk, it says that Noah had three sons, and he, it states their names. Wouldn't it be more grammatically correct to say, these are the generations of Noah, he had three sons, and the names of the three sons are Shem, Ham, and Yafet. Rashi seems to offer an explanation to this question, stating that the main offspring of a righteous person is their good deeds, their mitzvot, and it's describing their righteousness. That's why the Torah felt that it was appropriate to state first that these are the generations of Noah and talk about his righteousness in the next Pasuk. What happens? It's saying, Noah ish sadiq tamim haya bedorotav. It's stating that Noah was a tzaddik and he was complete and righteous in his generation. Does it mean that if he was in a different generation, he wouldn't be considered righteous? He would be an insignificant person? He'd just be another person in the community? Or does it mean maybe that he wasn't so righteous? Let's analyze both opinions. Let's first go with the negative. The first opinion is, he wasn't so righteous. The fact is, he was only considered to be righteous because he was in a generation of criminals. And they're trying to say, listen, had he been in another generation, he would have been insignificant. Nothing would have, there was nothing really special about him. That was the first question. That's the first opinion. The other opinion is, wow, Noah is such a righteous man because the negative influences of the society around him did not affect him, and he still managed to walk in the ways of Hashem. Well, here's another thing. They're also comparing him to Avraham, because in Parshat Lech Lecha, when they're talking about the greatness of Avraham, it states that he was able to walk before Hashem. So one is saying, in this, in this Pasuk, it says that Noah walked beside Hashem, indicating that Yes, he did follow in a righteous path and follow in the ways that Hashem wanted a person to lead and conduct themselves and lead their lives. But it's saying he walked beside Hashem, which means and implies that Hashem needed to kind of hold him up and prop him up and kind of guide him in every step of the way, as opposed to Avraham Avinu, which, uh, which stated that he walked before Hashem, which means that Avraham Avinu was able to walk in a righteous path and do good deeds on his own without the constant guide, guidance and prodding that Hashem gave Noah. The Torah has a concept of Zecher Sadiq Lebracha. We have to mem memorialize a Sadiq for positive and blessing. In which case, that, that concept in itself is a way to explain that Noah was a Sadiq, he was a righteous individual, and the Torah meant to praise him and not rebuke him when he said he was a righteous person in his generation. So we're going to go with the latter view that says 
had he been born into generations where there was more righteous people, Noah would have been even greater. In this parsha is the first time that it makes reference to a righteous person calling somebody a Sadiq. And then we're saying that Noah really wasn't so great, he had his faults. And what we should learn from this is, even if it's trying to teach us that in future generations, when somebody is categorized as a Sadiq, they shouldn't be brought under a complete microscope where every, every one of their deeds is overanalyzed to the point of where we're going to try and discredit the person. This is not what the Torah wants. We want, it's trying to teach us that each person has to be judged based on the factors and influences around him. So that's why we're saying that Noah is a tzaddi. Now, we also learn in the Gemara of Sanhedrin that Noah was destined to die in the flood and he maybe should not have been saved. So he had some kind of merit. That's why Noah, found, Noah was able to find favor in the eyes of Hashem. What was it? So it turns out that it was the, the future generation. Hashem saw that, that Abraham Avinu would come out of it. And in the future zechut of what Abraham was going to do, this is the reason why Noah was saved. Otherwise, what was Noah's real big flaw? Noah lacked empathy. One of the meanings of the word Noah is comfort. Noah was comfortable in his situation. He was comfortable in his surroundings. What happens? Shem tells Noah, listen, build the Teva, build the Ark, and you're going to have to go in there and take all the species and we're going to start a new world just with you. So Noah starts building the ark according to the specifications Hashem gives him, and he carries on. What was his mistake? He lacked empathy. He was very comfortable in his domain, and instead of going and saying, Hashem, please have mercy on the other people of the generation, inspire them to, to uh, repent their ways, and take out the desires from them to do sin, let them repent and then pardon them for their previous sins, forgive them completely, and leave the world as it is. But no, what did Noah do? He just carried on his way, he built the Teva, and when it was time to go into the ark, he went with his family. So that was one thing that um, was a fault of his. What do we learn from all this? If you want to grow and truly be righteous, what you need to do is, you have to learn. To, you have to learn from Noah not to be so comfortable. When you think that you're comfortable in your status quo, get up, make yourself a little bit uncomfortable, and learn how to improve yourself and make yourself better. For a while, you just make yourself slightly uncomfortable and out of your comfort zone, and then you wind up becoming an even greater person. As we learn from Chazal, the fum sara agra, the greater your pain, the greater your reward. Let's all strive to be better people. Have a wonderful Shabbat.